Well, happy Sunday, everybody. I'm in a good mood, and it's probably pretty obvious why. Um, before we get too into what exactly we're looking at here, um, I'm sure you've noticed there was no video last week. And the reason for no video last week was uh, I just didn't get enough, uh, enough work done on it to justify another video. Uh, last Saturday, I think I sheeted the top side of uh, that top portion of the wing, and I planned on sheeting this portion of the top of the wing on Sunday and then doing a video. But Sunday, the weather was beautiful, so me, my boy, and RJ Monroe uh, went down to Millersburg RC and flew some jets and some aerobatic stuff and just had a hell of a day. So throughout the week, um, I finished sheeting most of the top of the, the other half of the wing. But yesterday and today is where all the progress happened. So, once again, before we get into the whole thing, um, yeah, everything is now sheeted. The airplane is completely built. I have nothing else on the airplane that needs to be, uh, I guess, constructed. It is, it is a built airplane now, um, just a lot of finishing and, you know, there's still things I have to do, you know, the, you know, firewall, build the engine mount, that kind of thing. But the overall construction of the airplane is completely finished. So, uh, yesterday, as I said, I finished sheeting the wing. Um, I put the leading edges on, got those carved to shape and did the wing tips. And there's just something satisfying uh, when you get the wing tips done. I don't know why, it, just, it really makes the whole thing real. Um, and I have some, some, more, some shaping left to do. Um, the court, the, the Bearcat wing tips are, are kind of, kind of blocky, but I think I do need to kind of round them off just a little bit more. Uh, leading edge turned out really well. Um, I haven't put this portion of the leading edge on yet because I had to get the wing mounted first, which now is mounted, as we can see. This is mounted. This is, that's, that's it. Um, and when I sheeted, I know I've already gone over the fact that I do separate pieces when I do this, just because it makes it easier. And you'll notice in the center of the wing, on both sides, the balsa is an extremely different color. And that's because uh, even though there's one, two, three pieces for this center piece here, that all came from one sheet. And that's a very hard, uh, kind of heavier, very dense balsa. And I did that on both sides of the top, right in the middle for a reason. That's really for strength. And it does add a lot of strength. You may not think it, but it really does. And just like on the bottom, um, I sheeted the flap and ailerons in one piece um, and not sheeting over the gap that gets cut out. And the reason I did it that way, it takes a little bit more figuring out because you have to cut this piece just right, get it on there. But now you can see all the way through the wing. So when I, have, when I go to cut the flap and ailerons off, it's going to be super easy to, to hit it with my saw. Because if it was all sheeted, then I got to go through and make measurements and just you know, hope I cut it in the right space. So that's the reason I did it that way. Um, just overall, I think it's the easiest way to go about it. Um, so the wing is almost to the same state as the fuselage. Um, there's no filler on the wing yet. It's just been rough sanded with 80 grit. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's very smooth. So I have a little bit more sanding to do just to kind of get that, get all the sheets blended together. <sighs> I'm out of breath and I don't know why. Well, I know why, but yeah. Anyways, um, I'm going to do to the wing what I've already done on the fuselage and the stab. You can see where I've added just a little bit of filler um, anywhere where there's uh, a connection between two sheets. And, and I know I went over this already. The fact that the uh, 
it looks like there's a lot of filler on there, but there's not. Just the filler that I use really soaks into the wood, and it kind of stains it a little bit. So even when it's all sanded smooth, it kind of looks blotchy, but that's, you know, that is what it is. So once I get the filler put on the wing, I'll go ahead and put some, uh, some 150 on my sanding block. And I know it always looks like I'm clean and all that good stuff, but yeah, I got some cleaning up to do. Uh, once I get the filler put on, I'm going to take my 80 grit off my bar sander here and put 150 on there and really get everything blended out with that. So that will be um, shortly. Um, yeah, so this morning I started putting all the wing mounts in the fuselage and put the mounts on the front of the wing which is a really odd way to do it. I've never done it this way before. Uh, really interesting. So it's hard to see from the top side here, but the wing mounts for the fuselage actually glue to the, uh, uh, the sub firewall. And it's just a triangle wedge. You can see the bolt in there. Now on the other side of this block, this block right here is attached to the fuselage firewall and the wing saddle. Now on the other side of this block down here is an identical block to this, but that block is glued to the leading edge of the wing. So what you do, or at least what I did, is I epoxied these blocks to the fuselage first, and then I screwed the other blocks to them, and then basically put some epoxy on the leading edge of the wing, slid the wing in place, and then when the epoxy dried, I can unscrew it and the whole thing comes out in one piece. It worked out extremely well. Um, I got the gear... When did I get the gear? A couple weeks ago, I think. I'm not too impressed on how much I had to carve out the landing gear blocks to get them in there. The, the spacing of the ribs is right for the gear to fit in there, but the gear have to... They have to go in at an angle like this to get in there. So I had to carve out just a little bit on each side of the landing gear blocks to, to accommodate it going in there, you know, at that at an angle. So I know it'll be fine. I'm just not overly happy about doing that. But I know um, so many are going to be up, upset that I am going with just standard gear. Um, this is just the, the Robart pneumatic gear. Um, it's actually the P51 gear, which is the same for the, uh, the Bearcat. But I think it looks good. You know, yeah, it'd look nice if they were, you know, a little closer together, but that's a lot of money. And when the gear's up, you know, you can't see it anyway. And plus, I got that super awesome scale, you know, fixed tail wheel back there. Um... Oh yeah, so I literally just put it on its legs about 10 minutes ago just to see what it's going to look like, and I am just beside myself. Um, how you're looking at it is just the way it turned out. Let's see if we can maybe get a good view. So that's just how the wing ended up fitting in the saddle. That's how the stab fits on the saddle, and that's how the fin sits. So the tail section is just sitting on there, but it if I was to the point where I was ready to glue it on, I would glue it on right now, just like that. No need to measure anything, everything is good. You can't you can't ask for anything better. That just that turned out really well. And yep, I got the radio out uh, going in my trusty FR Sky X20 and I've already got the Bearcat in there. And uh, let's see if it'll focus on it maybe. I doubt it, but that is going to be the color scheme of the Bearcat, the aluminum with the uh, white and blue stripes on the tail. So, yeah, I just put that there just to have something neat in the shot. Let's get rid of that. I know certain flyers out there don't want to see that. That's the wrong radio. Ah, whatever. Anywho, there we go. Now that we're back into focus. Um, I got a canopy coming from Phil Clark at Fighter Aces um, over in the UK. I was going to go just with the Zeroli canopy, just because I'm a purist. But 
I know the Bates one's going to look a little bit better on there, so I just decided to go with that. Um, let's see what else is there. There were there, there were so many questions when I was building the wing, but I can't remember what they were. Um, of course, once the wing, once the top side of the wing is sheeted, you can see it has a very noticeable twist. And the washout is not like your typical washout. Look at that trailing edge. That just turned out so nice and straight. Anyways, um, it doesn't really have much of a twist, you know, at the wing tip. It's kind of, the whole wing has that, that kind of twist to it, which I think looks a lot better than having washout on the wingtips anyway. Um, but just following Nick, Nick's plans uh, makes it very clear on how to do that, though I almost did it wrong. Thank goodness I was talking to my buddy Dave Chu, who has built probably every Zeroli airplane and probably three or four of each one. <laughs> And uh, he kind of set me straight a little bit because I was about to do it wrong. But thank goodness I did not do it wrong. Uh, let's see, what else is there? I did put a post on Facebook um, a couple days ago where I was planning on using these uh, Pro Modeler Mini Servos. I mean, these things are absolutely just beyond impressive and even though uh, the gear train is small because they are a mini not a standard I know a hundred percent for sure that they would work fine in this airplane um, but but not to say that anybody got to me telling me that I'm an idiot for trying to use these I started thinking twice not necessarily about using them in the Bearcat, but let's just say these two are going to be in the Bearcat for sure. These are going to be somewhere else, but I'm not sure exactly what or when, but I have plans for these four right here. But that'll be for a future video. And I'm watching uh, Reno Air Racing stuff. You know, yeah. Too bad those days are gone forever. I don't like that kind of change. That kind of change really irks me. Um, so, I'm kind of scatterbrained. I haven't gotten a lot of sleep. And I'm just overwhelmingly excited about this thing sitting on its legs. That just makes me happy. Um... Kind of not sure if I want to flip it over or do anything like that. I don't think so, because there's not that much to go over. Um, so I'm going to do all of the rest of the sanding and filling on the wing before I cut the ailerons and flaps off. So that way everything is true. Everything is flat. So then when I cut them off, all i got to do is put the hard points in for the hinges, face them, and we'll be good to go. I mean, it sounds easy, but uh, that's going to be a little bit of a pain. And I am so not looking forward to that. That belly pan has been just keeping me up at night because I have to magically cut this thing into a shape to where it'll just fit right underneath. And, yeah, I just, I, I don't think it's going to go very smoothly. But then again, I thought mounting the wing was going to be kind of a chore, and it actually turned out to be quite easy, and I got it done rather quick. So maybe I'll be surprised. But um, I'm not going to glue the tail section on just yet. Not until I get the, uh, uh, the rest of the leading edge bits on the wing, get the belly pan mounted to the wing. Once all that is done, and I have the fuselage basically final sanded, then I'll go ahead and attach the tail. Because I really don't want to move this thing around with that tail on there if I don't have to. Because um, for being an 87-inch wingspan, this thing is a monster. I mean, it's the same wingspan as a Top Flight uh, P-47, uh, P-40, but this thing is just a massive hunk of airplane. This thing is huge. 
So once I'm ready, obviously I'll get the uh, I'll get the tail glued on. Then I have to do some sheeting around this area, and then I have to make the uh, the uh, the dorsal fin uh, fillet, which I'm not looking forward to either. Once again, like I said, this is without trying. Look at that. It just turns out straight. No measuring, no nothing, just using my eyeballs, and it looks good. It's kind of the nice thing about building Nick's airplanes, is uh, as long as you follow his plans, um, you really can't go wrong. And even if you did, you could build this thing upside down, inside out, backwards, and, you know, build it out of lead. As long as you put enough engine in it, it'll fly. You know, the more I'm looking at it, I was thinking I was going to have to shim those uh, those gear legs, but they look pretty darn good to me, so I think I'm going to leave them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I can't I can't retract them yet. I do have the openings cut out, obviously, to get them into the wing, but I haven't cut the rest of the sheeting to accommodate the strut or the wheel yet. I will do that some other time. So, that's about all I got. Um, there are a lot more things to go over, but I think I'll do that later um, when the plane's uh, disassembled. I don't feel like taking it apart and continuing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean up the shop, and I want to sit here and stare at it for a while. Like I said, once... Uh, once you start seeing it in one piece and looking like an airplane, kind of makes the project feel good, you know. And I'm just over, um, I'm like a what, like six weeks into this build, and it's clearly a Bearcat. So that's pretty cool. It's gone together very, very quickly. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just stoked. That's It's pretty cool. So one more quick walk around and peek at it, and then uh, then we'll cut this video off here. I just backed into something, and it kind of hurt. Ouch. Anywho. All right. Well, I think it's time to go get some pizza, and I'm going to get my shop all cleaned up and kind of figure out what the next steps are. I don't know if I want to start working more on the fuselage or what. I don't know. Like I said, the the hard the, the easy stuff is all done. Now it's the hard stuff. You know, the figuring things out, fitting things together, finishing, final shaping. You know, that stuff all takes time. I'm gonna have to get the cowl pretty soon. Um, I still haven't figured out where I'm gonna put my elevator servos. If I'm gonna put them in the stab, or just stick them under the fuselage. I think they're just gonna be under the fuselage. That's what I'm think I'm gonna do. The rudder servo is going to be in the fuselage running a carbon push rod out to the rudder and the tail wheel. And of course, aileron and flap servos are going to be in the wing. Duh. But, uh, yeah. All right, now I promise. One more quick look, and then we'll cut her off. All right, later.